And this is the, the, the thing that we're facing, Darren, you know. Are we going to be honest about who we are and what we are going forward? Are we going to remain cowards? What world do we want our children and grandchildren to grow up in? Do we want them to grow up in a Mark Twain world with Huckleberry Finn and this sense of freedom and uh, where you can just enjoy uh, existence itself? Or are we going to punish children who are coming through by making them pay for their education, taking on massive debt for their education, spending decades of their life paying off their education? Or are we going to treat the future generations the way we were treated? It's time for us to draw that line in the sand and say, what are we, the people alive today, all of you, stop being cowards. It's time for us to decide what future are you going to give the next generation? It's your responsibility. You can't sit on the fence. Sitting on the fence is guilt. We've seen a thousand years of the efforts of our predecessors and our and our forefathers being evaporated before our eyes, all the way from the Magna Carta, all the way from Montesquieu, all the way through to the to the great greatest uh, freedom document ever put together, which was the Constitution of the United States. Um, and, and, you know, interestingly, Muhammad, even back when that constitution was formulated, was horrible injustice because they still uh, said that they said in one, st one sentence, all men are created equal, but some are more equal than others. Uh, the American Indian is not equal to us. The black man isn't equal to us. We, we had it wrong in a lot of ways. And when you look behind who was propagating and promoting the inequality of blacks, you find you find the same criminals. You find the same criminals bringing poisoned blankets to Indian tribes and selling them booze. The same carpetbaggers going down south and, and, and destroying the fabric of the society without actually addressing the social ills. And still, the document itself was still correct. The adherence to it was not. And so what we've got to do here is be honest going forward and say, look, are we going to re-embrace the work of a thousand years and this time be inclusive and stop the rot from the top, get rid of this criminal element once and for all? They've been in our lives for 2,000 years, 2,000, and they've morphed and they've changed and they've moved. Their, their, their geographic location has changed. Their business acumen has never changed. Their, their criminality, the willingness to steal and be immoral and sociopathic and murderous has never changed. They are leopards. Their spots will not change going forward or into the past. It doesn't change. So it's like a cancer. It has to be addressed. You don't allow a cancer to grow in your, in, in your human family. You can't. It will kill you. It will kill the human family as it will a human body. And so we got to do something radical or we're going to be under the boot of tyranny permanently. And we said this, Muhammad, you and I talked about this, the electronic advances they're making, the technological advances that are being um, um, unveiled daily and weekly here are going to allow these people to have a force multiplier effect to the point where we will never see freedom again. They will be able to notice any aberration in the direction of freedom long before it gets started, and they will stomp it out. We no longer will be free in the, in, for the remainder of our natural lives and the futures of our children and grandchildren. Humanity will die as a free uh, entity. It will die. And exactly, Darrell. This, this is, this is the, the decision that, that, that people are looking at, the right to privacy and the right to freedom. These, these are rights that if you uh, believe in God, they're God-given. They're not something that a human being, although human being has got the capability of corrupting these things, it doesn't de uh, detract from the fact that they were God-given. So if you believe in God, then you've got to recognize that, you know, man is free to make the choices that he wants. He can make those privately and to make the mistakes that he wants. You know, this is one of the things, to err is human, to be wrong is human. That's the whole point, and people have to be free in order to make wrong decisions. Sometimes we learn, sometimes we don't learn. 
But, uh, and hopefully we all learn from our mistakes, but you do, without making the mistake, you can't learn from it. You know, Daryl, when these, we, we said this about the French Connection message, I mean, one of the things that was special about what's been done here, the work here over the years, was this new technology, the internet, um, the intelligence services. You and I had a private conversation about this. Uh, we've spoken on the subject many times about, uh, you know, what they're probably thinking and how they're reacting to us. But one of the most important things for the intelligence services and the CIA and all these people is to be able to control um, what they used to term the mighty Wurlitzer. Back in the days of printed media before the Internet, they controlled what people saw on TV and what they read in the newspapers and heard on the radio. They controlled it all. And all of a sudden the Internet came along and, um, you know, a, a few uh, men who uh, d didn't fear went out and started spreading a message in a way that it, it was exponential, even though it was only a few thousand people. It was yeah. exponential compared to the way it had gone on previously, Daryl. Um, and, of course, that in itself has continued down the Richter scale, and each each uh, standation that it goes down one, one, it's exponential, so it's now in the millions. And they tried, as you remember, Daryl, many attempts to control the um, um, I am the witness dot com and the French connection uh, yeah. content, whether it was through trying to overthrow your website, prevent access to it, steal the content. You remember when you had to ask uh, listeners to get your files back? Yes, because they'd been surreptitiously and sneakily de deleting them in the background. That's right. But the point is that what they've learned about this technology is they can't stop it. And I'm now going to say some of the as an explanation for people that they probably haven't heard before, Daryl. So because they can't stop it, the other thing they need to understand is um, how far it goes. One of the other major frustrations for them has been who came to the French connection? Who's taken what file and who's copied it where? What's this map look like? And they don't know. They don't know how far this information is going and how it's being disseminated. So they then decided to embark on a very expensive and ambitious project. Um, and this project was to copy everything. Yes. And this, co this project requires the all-important metadata that we keep hearing about. The metadata tells us who's looking at what website, who's in contact with whom. Who's looking at the French connection today and has now um, sent an email on with a story or information from there to how many people and how far does that go through? How many iterations does that go through? This is what the purpose behind the enormous IT infrastructure that the NSA has been building. They are trying to understand who knows what? That's what it's about. So it's not the, the reason why it appears non-targeted is because they don't know who to target. They don't know who's looking at this information. And because they don't know, and because people can use all sorts of other technologies out there to, to, to even mask their, them a little bit further, they've tried to break into people's computers, uh, break into their mobile phones, all of this stuff, because they are desperate to understand who knows what to understand the extent before it becomes the grassroots movement that it's already forming out to be. So everybody is a suspect in this yep. game. That's and right. that's what people don't realize. The reason they're being spied on is not because they're innocent Americans or innocent Europeans or innocent members of the world citizenry. They're all guilty until we know whether you've looked at this type of content and whether you're aware. And the, the race is on now as to whether they can build technology to understand the spread of that information versus the spread of information getting there and rising up against them beforehand. That's the clash of civilization that we're uh, about to see. An interesting part of the, of the caveat to that statement, Mohammed, is I've had... Uh, 4.2 million downloads of, um, and that's not hits, I'm talking downloads of the Ben Friedman um, broadcast that we found. We found. I was the first place to ever put that on the internet. I was, we got it from a from an LP record into digital and then put it up on the net, on the site. 
Yeah. Um, somebody has estimated that there's been over 40 million downloads of that um, speech he gave, and possibly higher, possibly as high as 60 million. And that was somebody who did some analysis looking at all of the different sites that carry it and where it's gone and, and how many translations have been done. Um, so let's say for even on a conservator, let's go 40 million. I mean, anybody who hears Ben Friedman talk about the Zionist crime wave and what it means for the future and what it means for your children's future, he was very, very blunt and explicit about what it meant. And you knew from the first that he was sincere. That means that there are 40 million converts uh, to that information instantly. You don't listen to that broadcast and not be converted. You know that Brent Friedman was telling you the way it is. And that, for me, of course, hearing that came after I had already, uh, and I'm going to give credit to Carol Valentine. I had been to her site, come here, and seen Nesta Webster's uh, writings. I read her entire book, uh, and I put that on my site immediately, and I give Nesta, um, Carol Valentine credit for having put that out first. But then came the 30 or 40 different books that were just pouring in from everywhere because I was the only place that was going to put it up. Nobody else had the courage or the, they weren't the first mover in this market, and I was willing to do it. And the willingness to do it got this stuff out there. And now I see that stuff everywhere. It's ubiquitous almost, some of these books. And not one of them has a link to my website. Well, yeah. Yeah, in, in some respects, you know, the fact that the book is there is it, it is its own link. Um, again, this comes down to courage, doesn't it, Daryl? The no, uh, you know, over the years, um, the number of people who took information from your website but were too frightened to link to it. Um, I imagine that some of those people, uh, even though they've um, grown some level of um, bravado on the basis of safety in numbers. You know, um, there is a certain that not not everybody's got the the, the the same level of bravado. You and I have had uh, many a bloody nose um, in the, in this fight in the in the early days. Um, we're used to personal attacks and all sorts of ridiculous allegations, maybe personal threats. You're aware of damage that's been done to my family by these people. Oh yes. Um, I, I don't like to talk about it, the kidnapping of my son and things like that that I've uh, experienced. I, I've been through tremendous pain. Uh, if you ask me, would I go back and do it again? Uh, unequivocally is the answer, because you know I believe in my faith and I have to walk that walk, um, and therefore I have no option. Um, you will not allow your uh, intelligence to be insulted and that's one of the reasons that you you've stood there down you've got your own belief system but this stuff when you realize you know, how people have been hoodwinked and what fools they make out of people it, just the fact that you 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 um, give value to your own intellect means that you won't allow yourself to be fooled any further and not be treated like an idiot so you know there's important stands that were made there with this um, very early on but now there is safety in numbers people can associate with it en masse and we do have um, large numbers of people out there but unfortunately you know we still haven't got rid of um, the criminal element, although more and more people are aware of the, the crimes and the criminals at the top, um, this whole spying on everyone. Um